Hello there. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Conversation for Days podcast. You're here with Kalilo and the Reverend himself, Frankie. Frank and Love in the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here in San Francisco, people. That's what's up. That's what's up. You know, we're just at the beach, you know, doing these big things. Why? Because, you know, we can. We're, we're cool like that. You know, yeah, because, you know we're, we're conscious for days. We're, we can expand. That's right. That's right. So we're living lavishly up here. You know, ain't no quarantine in our midst. <laughs> you know, don't pay attention to the edges of, of us, you know. <laughs> hey, everything that you see on the screen is is real. It's not it's not virtual stuff. It's, it's 100% real. It's legit. 100% real. Yeah, man. So everybody, man, we back. Uh, we make back. Sure to, you know, like, subscribe, comment, share with people. Mm-hmm. You know, they need to do to support the best or number one podcast. I don't want to. uno. You know. And yes, uh, today, man, or this week, we got a great topic for everybody. Um, so this topic is going to be, I think it's, it's going to be, uh, most, people, most people are going to expect this. Uh, yeah. so we're going to talk about something that everybody knows, that everybody in their life, they, they you know, it's part of their surroundings, where they live. And it is... What it is? Neighbors. Neighbors, huh? Okay. All right. Cool, cool, cool. More specifically about the subject, I wanted to talk about how when it comes to like neighbors, like there's a question for everybody, like, do you know your neighbors well, would be my question. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that, it kind of, that's how we came up. I came up with the topic and I wanted to discuss and go more to deep into like, if there's, you know, things like such as, if, is there a certain loss of sense of community when it comes to neighborhoods and certain neighbors? Because in my current environment, you know, I have neighbors like everybody else, but do I know them that well? Uh, not, not really. You know, you can be polite and be like, "Hey, how's it going?" and all, but that's yeah. pretty much the dynamic, like how it is in my place where I live with you know the dynamics that it is. So we're gonna explore that through different questions. Awesome. Uh, so we can start here with the first question, which is kind of like a general question, but okay. know, to get our opinions. So mm-hmm. Lilo, let me ask you this: So when it comes to the topic of neighbors, uh, in your in your mind or in your opinion. What would be a factor or reason why some neighbors don't really communicate to each other? Like why some neighbors don't communicate to each other? Mm-hmm. Oh man, yo, I feel like so much goes into that. Cause it's like, I mean, you know, everybody's so into technology nowadays. It's like, you don't really have to, you know, leave your spot or go out places just to interact with people. You know, you can do that online. Uh, you got your anti-social stuff, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you got your Netflix, which you can binge all day, keeps you inside, you know, keeps you uh, nice and comfortable. So yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like one of the biggest factors is probably technology. But I mean, because it allows us to interact with people in a way where, you know, you set the image and it's just that, it's just the image, you know? So it's like when you're interacting with other people, uh you, you can literally be in your pjs you know not ready to go out at all but you're still having a good interaction and people are having the image that like oh you're this person in a suit because that's your profile pic <laughs> you know what i'm saying so it's like i mean i feel like maybe there's less effort uh but with neighbors though mm-hmm. yeah it, it can vary it can vary but i, I don't know I'm, I'm gonna go with technology i'm gonna say that's one of the biggest things but but what do you feel yeah I mean, I, I, I agree uh, when it comes to technology for one of the, I would say, biggest factors because like there was a time, okay, so, you know, I currently live, you know, in the South, Alta Vista, everybody in the South, shout out to y'all. But um, before, oh, like, most of my life, <laughs> you, you moved to Ghana, man. You're not even an a auto. Hey, 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 don't call me out like this, okay? I still, I still rep the OT. <laughs> but at the same time, man, I'm not going to fault you, bro. A lot of people now are moving to Quebec because, yo, Ottawa, man, the, the prices, man, is getting too much, man. <laughs> it's way too much. And it's skyrocketing every time. Like, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. out of this world. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah, man, yo. I don't know who got to got to the mayor or whoever, man. Just, yo, we can't lose all of our Ottawa people like that, man. Come on, yeah. man. Actually, we're actually. We're in the city. But, yeah, but all that to say, okay, so when it comes to the question, so why uh, is not as much maybe communication when it comes to some of the neighbors, I would say, well, technology is one because with technology, people are gonna isolate more. Um, yeah. I think too, the, I would say the biggest thing is when it comes to outdoors, like being outdoor into, uh, versus being indoor. 
So I remember back in the days before technology, I remember when I used to live in San Diego. Shout out to, to my place hey, where I, you know, I was born. Gotta love the hills. Yeah, yeah. And like, I remember I lived in a, you know, what we call a co-op. So, you know, it's like a townhouse and they like all stick together into one. But yeah. like, man, I knew all of my, like most of my neighbors, we were really close. You know, when we were younger too, we would go outside, right? And then by going outside, you'll be able to connect with some of the other kids and, you know, some of your neighbors. And then from there, you get to know to their parents and then your parents get to know them. And then it becomes really like a community, a sense of community where even where I live, I think it's maybe that, I, I won't, I'm not going to say that the, maybe there's a total loss of community because there could still be in some neighborhoods, I would say, I think it's easier when there's more like proximity, like when, you know what, like when, like as they're stick together, like it's, you can't really, it's hard to ignore your neighbor. You don't want to leave yeah. the house and then someone's even their house at the same time. You yeah. can't just be like, and then just leave. Like, you'd be like, hey, let's go, blah, blah, blah. And where I live, like, you know, there's a space between the houses. So even though you can say like, hey, to your, your neighbors and stuff, there's times where, you know, maybe I was listening to music or something, it was like late at night, and someone is, you know, one of my neighbors is uh, just came back from somewhere too, and they're about to go home, and me too. And at times you might say, "Hey," at the time you can be like, eh, "I don't feel like it." Yeah, uh, it's it's not a big, you don't like it. It's not a <laughs> big problem, right? But yeah. before, when I lived in Sandy Hill, like now, you know, every time you see a neighbor, it's always like, "Hey, how's it going?" And even that, it's not even just the "Hey, how's it going?" because that's like more like a a polite way just for people to. Just to, to have a, you can say a good image of you. Like, they're not going to be like, ah, you know, those neighbors, they don't even talk. They don't even say, hey, like, that's right. Thing, like, you know, they ignore everybody. Like, just I think the bases. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you cover the bases, then you're safe, right? But yeah, yeah but I think the, yeah, the outdoor, I would say that's the biggest problem is just we are not, we don't go outdoor or outside as much as we used to. And because of that, we isolate ourselves and we're not able to actually get to know our neighbors. Uh, it's more of just it's just someone that lives right next to me but that's it there's no like rapport there's no really like relationship per se uh, yeah so be, so technology is a big factor when it comes to that um i would say and um yeah so that would i would say i would say it's, it's uh just more of the we're not really going outside as much because when you go outside you're able to get to you know do certain activities where you can meet people, you can interact with people. Like for example, like where I live, like two minutes away, we have like a park, right? And we That's have like perfect. a basketball yeah. court, right? And mm -hmm. I love basketball, I'm a basketball guy. And um, during the summer at times, I would I go there, go play ball. And then going there, you know, there's other kids, other guys, you know what I mean, that comes in, go play ball. And basketball, I feel like it's one of the, like, the, uh, the purest form of like, uh, communication when it comes yeah. To yeah because it's just so easy go, it's nice yeah yeah because when you go it's like people want to play together and then from there you're able to get to you know to get people's name and then from there you can build relationship you know after a while that's right and, and it's like, always i feel like it's always the more the merrier at the court you know i mean like I, I always feel like people are always looking for somebody to like just join them or even just like you know play a nice two on two or mm -hmm. three on three you know if there's like if it can be six on six, I feel like, you know, they're always looking for bigger numbers. So it's always nice to just interact and like, you know, yeah. just, just have a nice game of, game of ball, you know? <laughs> That's crazy too, because like from that, then I know some of the, you know, the people in the neighborhood, their, their names and everything, and we're cool now, but I don't even know the names of most of my names. Like, I don't even know the name of my neighbors. That's the crazy yeah. thing too, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, we say hey and everything, but I don't even know their names rather than back in, back when I was in Santa the Hill, like, we knew everybody, the kids, the parents, you know what I mean? So it was yeah. a different dynamic. So it kind of, when I moved to, to here to South, like, hey, there's nothing wrong. It's a good neighborhood. It's quiet. It's chill. But in terms of like the sense of community or people really like knowing each other and doing certain activities together, mm -hmm. there's not really that, you know what I mean? It's kind of people are doing all, their own thing, uh, which has nothing against, but I don't know. In my opinion, I feel like it makes, it's kind of like to have a, a, a strong community I feel like where you live, the community that you live, there needs to be certain, I don't know, like activities or any things that needs to be done to kind of like, you know, for people to interact, you know what I mean? That's true. That's true. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. And because uh, it's like, um, yeah, you know, I noticed there's, there's some places, a good example would be like um, in Toronto, 
like uh, where my mom lives, you know, like um, uh, their whole community, every time they always set up uh, some nice kind of like festivals, you know, they always do some barbecues in the summer. They have ice cream that they just bring to the place and everybody comes out and just like, you know, has a good time. And it's like, it's a lot of people, but it gives you the opportunity to, you know, you're getting food next to somebody, you might as well say hi, because you know, they're your neighbors. So it's like, people are just so friendly and like interactive. So I'm like, it's nice. It's nice to do those kind of things because, you know, they're trying to like reinforce the whole, you know, love thy neighbor kind of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, man. Back when I lived in San Diego, we, uh, in my little co-op, like, yeah, we used to do barbecues. Like, oh, all those are the best. Stuff barbecues like, are the best. Yeah, yeah, and then everybody would go, hot ah. dogs, burgers, and why was it by, man? It was uh, good times, good times. So, yeah, so you said technology, I would say there's technology and also just the, well, I would say technology is one of the biggest factors why we don't go outside as much because, you know, now you have your computer here, you have your phone, you have Wi-Fi, you can't do everything you want from home. Um, from home yeah. yeah, so that's how it is. And then if I go here and to the next question, so let me ask you this, Khalil. Okay. Uh, do you think that there is a, there's a certain like loss of, like, did we like lose a sense of community? Mm. Look at how it is now compared to before. You see, I mean, just based off of the vibe, because I mean, I know there's some communities out there that are still tight, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see them as tight as they seemed in the past. I don't know. You know, that's probably just my perspective. I haven't been to all the neighborhoods. Yeah, yeah. But it just doesn't seem to have that same dynamic. You know, I mean, and it's like I've been friends with my neighbors, but they were like my immediate neighbors. You know, like just the next the next building over or like the next the next house over yeah i mean it's like that's the only kind of neighbor i would know is just the ones like right next to me you know so i mean it's been like that for a while uh other neighbors around the around the block you know it's like we never really used to talk or um if we see each other it would probably just be a high and buy kind of thing mm -hmm. and on top of that I'm not like, you know, sometimes you, do, you don't, you don't, you don't want to have those kind of interactions sometimes. Cause then it's like, if you start it, it's like, you know, just waving and like, yeah, just okay. starting a conversation in the morning on your way to work. You know what I mean? It's like, it's nice, but then you feel obligated to do that every time you meet them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's not always the case, but I mean, I, I've been in that situation where it's like, Ah, sometimes I, you know, I want to listen to music, but you know, since now I have this type of relationship with my neighbor, you know, I gotta prop prop down the music and then like have a small conversation on my way, you know, it, unless I'm just like, oh, you know, I'm I'm in a rush. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's part of the problem. But <laughs> yeah. there's just so much that like, um, uh, so much that goes into being a neighbor. Because I mean, that's the kind of person you're supposed to be uh, on good terms with your neighbor. You know, I mean, that's the kind of person that you that you, you need on your side. <laughs> you know, if anything happens, then it's like, yeah, you got your neighbor. You need to borrow some sugar. You got your neighbor, uh, lawnmower, whatever. You know, there's issues in the in the neighborhood. They got your back. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, when it comes to that question, I would say that I'm not I'm not going to say that there is a total loss of like when it comes to like a community because, you know, when you live in a, in a neighborhood, even though if you don't know your neighbors as well, there's still going to be that sense of, I mean, because you have people around, like other people that lives around you, there, it still kind of is a community, you know, if you maybe go by the, really the, the pure definition of what is a community, like, I think it's like, kind of like, you know, just having people around the group of people that lives in yeah. the same area, I think it would be a community. So in terms of that, I would still say that there's still a sense. Well, it's, it's, I think it's not as much maybe a sense that we lost a sense of uh, community, but maybe more that there's a, um, a loss of communication maybe, or a loss of uh, closeness. You know what I mean? Like it's not, we don't really have like a, a rapport per se. Um, it's kind of just more like, oh, this is the person that lives right next to me. That's it. There's not, yeah. not much more than that, right? But it's just for me, it's just that it's interesting because like at one time in my life, like the neighbors, some of them were eventually almost became like, you know, they became like, for example, like my little sister, like she was best friends with some of them, some of the neighbor's kids. And then sometimes she would go even like babysit. Like yeah. nowadays, like if, for example, I need 
and if I if if I need to have someone to babysit, um, I don't know. I mean, not like nobody nobody in my house needs to be babysit, but if, for me, if we had like a baby, yeah, maybe your cousin came by or something, something like this. <laughs> <laughs> and then I don't know my sisters are not able to to babysit; they're not there, and then I have to go somewhere. I'm not able to to just go to one of my neighbors and just ask, "Hey, uh, can you uh, babysit?" Like we don't really have that relationship where I can trust them like that, right? That's true. That's true. Yeah. That's where it's like, it kind of, because there's that loss of communication, there are so many things that if you need kind of uh, help or you need something, you can still ask your neighbor for some, but it's, there's still going to be that feeling of like awkwardness. Like, you know, when you're not really close to someone, you can even yeah. knock on the door and be like, hey, I have a need. But like, there's still that, uh, you know, kind of anxiety. But exactly. when I live in San Diego, it was like, and just going to see the neighbor just to ask for something it was nothing it felt like it was just like there's no pressure no anxiety yeah. right yeah it's like family <laughs> exactly exactly so yeah. i think that's that's i would say more of the loss is the communication aspect and i like what you said family it was yeah it's where i lived before it was like a family almost you know what i mean yeah like everybody talked to each other they help each other we did things together like activities and things that such yeah. and, and that's the best kind of mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the best kind of dynamic to have. You know, it's like when you're living with people that feel like family. I mean, I feel like nothing's better than that. You know what I mean? Because it's like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm not lending this to you in order to get something. It's like, no, no, if you need it, you know, like unconditionally, I got you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, at the same time, it's like, if if you're lucky enough to have a, a, a great structure, like a family structure, like, you know, you have both your parents, you know what I mean? If, you know, there's no like, drugs or anything bad involved in the family right then yeah. you know not being as close with your neighbors might not be the worst thing but if by any chance in where you live or in your family there's you know something that's you know is troubling and things like that it'll be good to maybe have a neighbor someone that you can maybe go and you know confide with or maybe get help you know sure. I mean? or even yeah. it, they could all, almost be like someone that could maybe even like reside like you can go and then stay in their house you know i mean for a bit that's true. Yeah, I actually, I had neighbors like that. And it was, it was nice too, because it's like, oh, you know, oh, you locked out? No, just, just, you know, like, come stay, like, at the place uh, up until somebody else comes home. You know, like, oh, man, I used to lose my keys back in the day. But, <laughs> but yeah, you know, thank goodness for, like, some good neighbors, you know. It's just like, oh, yeah, no, just stay here until, until yeah. your folks get back. And then, um, yeah, once they're back, then you're good. <laughs> but, like, it was, it was like family, you know. Yeah. Felt like staying at an aunt's place or something. <laughs> yeah that's correct that's correct so yeah. uh, what else what else we can say oh another question too so when it comes to neighbors so is knowing your neighbors depending on the type of environment you live in so if you think if it's either the type of area like if it's residential versus maybe housing or apartments or can it be more to like the key like the type of people that live there like if it's a uh, they're mostly maybe like uh, people from your own uh, culture. Culture, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Younger families, older families. Like based on your experience, Khalil, what would you say maybe Kennedy was the, the a factor that led you to be closer with some neighbors over others? Man, I mean, to be honest, like my, my folks are just really open open people just in general. So I mean, anywhere that they go, you know, they always... Uh, they, they make friends in every location. So, <laughs> so it's like, you know, even growing up in, uh, in Ledbury, like that's like my childhood place uh, yeah. growing up, you know, there was like a bunch of families around. That one was maybe more cultural, uh, kind of like neighbors. Okay. But, but, you know, like on the other side, there were like, you know, other races and everything like that. And we weren't, we weren't too far away. So it's like, you know, we would go to school with some of the kids in the neighborhood. So it's like automatically right out, like, you know, off of the school bus, uh, yeah. drop our bags at home, and then we're seeing each other at the park or something. You yeah. know, what I mean? so it was it was it was just nice like that. And then, mm -hmm. like, um, yeah, I don't know. It really it really just depends. It's like uh, sometimes it depends on who your neighbor is and just the chemistry uh, that you get out of interacting with them. You know, some neighbors where you, you know you can you, you can feel like, hey, maybe you know I can't. I don't know you're not too friendly or something like that. And it's like, you just leave them alone. But then there's other neighbors where it's just like, I like you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? No, for sure. I, I like, yeah. I love the answer. I would say for me, yeah, I don't think, I don't think that there's a, like there's a right type of environment I need to live in 
so that you can make more connections with your neighbors. Um, mm -hmm. I think that any type of environment, if it's uh, residential, if it's with younger families, older, you can all, you can say connect. I would say based on my experience, like the, the, the one environment that was, that, I, that there was more connections was back when I was in Sand Hill in the co-op and over there, like with my family too, most of us, we were like young families, like, you know, they, they had young kids, you know, just parents trying to, you know, you know, start working and everything, you know, yeah. so like their first, their first apartment, their place that they reside with their, you know, kids. So I think in, in that environment, it was kind of like perfect for us to, to in our, in our um, upbringings, because we kind of just grew up with them, you know what I mean? Like all of us, we were like me and the other kids, we were about the same age, most of us. So we yeah. kind of grew up together. We got to know each other together and vice versa. But like where I live now, most of my, like me, like one of my neighbors are like an older couple, right? And they're very nice. I remember first time we, when we moved there, they invited my parents to go grab like a coffee or tea to get to know each other a bit. So I was like, oh, that's, that's really nice, right? Because no, no other people did that, like neighbors. So them, like I, it's one of those neighbors where like, even though they're older, you can see that. And two, they're like Greek. So maybe I don't know if maybe in their culture where they're maybe more, uh, uh, not as less like, uh, they're more like inviting or maybe yeah. see people like, hey, you know I mean? They want to get to know them. And yeah. uh, even open. like yeah. one time when, you know, you go to remove the snow, that one of them will go and be like, yeah, as a go and talk a bit, like they have a son, really cool, very nice guy. And, That's right. Um, yeah, so for, I would say them would be one example of like, if they lived in San Diego, we would we would click, you know. I mean, like they would, you know, it's little type. It's like a type of neighbor. It's like you know, friendly. They want to talk, you know. What I mean, and yeah. know you a bit. Um, so I appreciate that. But overall, though, I mean, I don't know. It's a uh, it's interesting too because I think like as you grow up, like when I was younger, you know, and you were with a maybe a younger crowd, you kind of connect with them. But then now I'm what 23, I don't necessarily need to connect with necessarily all the kids in the neighborhood you know what i mean like i'm oh, yeah. yeah you know what i mean and then the older ones like i don't think they really want to to get close with a 23 year old like you know I mean? <laughs> you're kind of just stuck in the middle huh? <laughs> yeah, in the middle right so there's uh, like the, the little like challenge where it's like it's hard with the older you know folks it's hard to kind of connect because like i'm uh, you know i'm like adult but i'm, I'm kind of still young you know what I mean, for them yeah yeah, um, yeah. then the kids it's like some of them are just too young, so I can't, you know, you're not really gonna- yeah, people are looking at you to like babysit or like, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, hey, I never never had any uh, babysit invite yet. Um, okay. Ooh, if, 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 <laughs> I'm, hey, if money is involved, I'm, I'm up for it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yo, it could be fun. It could be fun sometimes up until you get like some kids that just don't listen or something. Well, troubling <laughs> kids, yeah, 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 troublemakers. <laughs> yeah, 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 because I mean, yo, like, I don't know, just me and my sister, like, we're, we're just very, like, I don't know, we try, we just have fun, like, you know, we, we could be kids, too, but then at the end of the day, it's like, you know, hey, just make sure everything is the way that we found it, <laughs> you know, nobody gets in trouble, have your fun, but, you know, make sure you can bring it back to the way you found it. <laughs> Actually, have, have you ever babysit one of your neighbors? Ever? Oh, yeah, yeah, I babysit, like, uh, a couple of times, and it was nice, it was nice, it was exactly, it was exactly that. Mm -hmm. you know just like have fun and uh uh do your thing uh we're gonna eat at a certain time but once um yeah you know when it's time for your parents to come back home or whenever whenever they're on their way back home yeah clean up make sure everything is, is the way you found it yeah and, that's it. and it was nice it was nice it was simple you know i think i back when i when i lived in today i think I, I did babysit maybe once not too many times but maybe once or twice but like my like my next door neighbor and their kids, yeah. yeah, they were they were really nice too and like good kids, you know. It's like it, it's, that's the best thing where it's like you know you're you asked you asked to do something like you know to go babysit and yeah the kids are just so chill or you know yeah. you can just have fun with them. It's like that's this is the best feeling. Like, imagine like going somewhere you have to babysit and, like like the kids are like running around breaking stuff like they're doing like, like crazy chaos and then it's like yo now I need to clean the house now I need to do certain things like. It's not really in my like my job and my job description to do as a baby. Exactly. Yeah. You're just a watcher, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, but that didn't happen for me. Nah, not yet. But uh actually, too, do you think that kind of prepare you? Uh you think that's gonna help you in the future when you have if you have kids? 
Like, do you uh, First off, I'm gonna take a moment just to say, yo, it's it's bad hot in my room. <laughs> Sweating, eh? Yo, yeah, yo, I've been trying to like, I'm in a new place. I've been trying to like figure out this uh, this temperature machine and how it works. You know, because like it's. I still don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's supposed to be on 20 degrees. I keep adjusting it, and it keeps going back. I don't know. I don't know. So I just got this. I'm just like. I'm gonna have to bounce throughout. <laughs> yeah, probably people are watching the episode watching it too. So all I got is like a sweater and just like you know. <laughs> you know people watching the episode are like, Yo, why is Khalilo sweating so much? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not nervous. I swear. Hot in here. Yo, Khalilo is feeling the pressure, bro. God damn. That's right. Yo, I'm, 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 these questions they're killer. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah. No, what was your last question though? Uh, my last question. Uh, or did I sway you off the topic? <laughs> Where are we about to go? Well, like I, I think I was kind of done with my my uh, my answer. I think I was kind of just my answer to the question was pretty much that there's no like specific environment or there's no like one environment that's more I feel more favorable to another. At the end of the day, we're all just human beings like one another. So you can connect with everybody. Um, some, as you mentioned, you're gonna have some people or neighbors that are just not really gonna be up to talk. You know, what I mean, and you just have to. To accept it and be like okay you know what i mean still have respect for them but just yeah. guys, as it is for the yeah, other that are friendly, <laughs> the other that are more like friendly and outgoing then you know you can maybe try to get a relationship with them if you can i think that's an advantage uh because i have a question here that kind of relates to it okay it is um where was it again yeah so it's not knowing your surroundings or some of your neighbors could that be a possible threat to your survival? Because if you know, if, if you know me and you bought the podcast, I'm a big uh, evo- uh, evolutionist, you could say. I don't know if that's the right word, but I, I like to talk about evo- evolution. I'm big on it. And yeah. even the topic of like, you know, survival and everything that is regard of, you know, it's just surviving itself. So if I ask you that question, Kilo, do you mm-hmm. think that's a, that's a, a possible threat to survival if you're not really, if you don't really have a relationship or don't really know your neighbors like that? Okay. Well, before I answer this question, let me just switch back to uh-huh. something more appropriate. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm sweating, but I'm in space. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> so uh, to, get, to get to your, to your uh, question there. Uh, so pretty much, I mean, not knowing your neighbor, I mean, you just don't know who's, who you're living with, right? Essentially. So it's like mm. um, not knowing your neighbor, if, if, if you find that like your shovel's been moved or your shovel's missing, you might just blame your neighbor. <laughs> instead of where you could have put it right so i mean it's like i don't know on a bad day you can end up blaming the wrong person simply because you don't you don't know them Mm -hmm. you know so it's like you know that's why most neighbors and stuff oh somebody moves in they make a nice gesture and they bring something it's like hey welcome to the neighborhood you know welcome uh to uh the circle you know what i mean so it's like i I always appreciate stuff like that when people do that because i mean it's it really breaks the ice, you know, because then any anytime you see the person, you just feel more comfortable, you know, it's like, oh, they brought you something. So mm-hmm. it's like, hey, I have this, sir, I got this cake from so and so, you know, it's it, you can't find it around here. You know, I just want you and the family, if you guys want to try it out, and I have a piece for you. And it's like, oh, you know, just yeah. build the relationship even better, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What if yeah. I ask you this, for example, like a, a, a just a random um, situation. So like, what if, I don't know, um, you, uh, you know, you're at home, you're drinking tea or coffee, or, you know, you're, you know, you're chilling, not doing much. And then um, someone knocks at your door, right? And then you open the door and it's, a, it's someone with a gun pointing in your head, right? Yeah. And then you have like a neighbor that sees it from afar or whatever, like a neighbor that you, that you know, but you don't really like have a particular relationship with. Like, do you think, do you think that your neighbor would call the police? Man, actually, oh, let me tell you something, man. Because <laughs> okay, okay. I have a story, man. I have a story, okay. story time. And I feel so bad because I just wasn't there at the time. Okay. But like, there were these people one time that were like scoping out uh, just, you know, the neighborhood. And like, they were looking at, a, at, at the building, mm-hmm. you know, just trying to kind of see, you know, in between like the windows and everything like that. They were anticipating to like rob something or something. But like, my neighbor came back home and he like confronted them. And they ended up, you know, getting into a fight with them. But like, yo, he like, he pretty much, he beat the hell out of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But then it was just, it was just like, cause you know, they were trying to start like trouble too, you know, being like, oh, you know, well, which him call it. And then like, they started to step up to him. So then he was just like, to him, he was defending, you know, like the, the building. Cause it's like, yo, don't be, don't be out here. Just like posted up 
try to scope things out so you can plan something like negative, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, so uh, this was probably at like two a two in the morning or so, something like that. But the police, you know, they had to come, they were called and everything like that. But when they arrived, when they arrived, they just tackled my neighbor to the ground mm -hmm. and arrested him first without question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they, they, yeah, they tackled him, arrested him without question. Mm -hmm. And they started talking to the two people that were scoping out the place, you know? And I like, it was messed up because he was, you know, nobody was home at the time to be like, yeah. yeah, this man lives here. They had to take him to the station, process him. And then like when they, uh, cause I'm just like, I was even asking, I was like, that doesn't make sense. I mean, they look, didn't they look at your ID? Like, <laughs> yeah. But apparently he got brought to the station and then that's where things got cleared up. But I think they let, they let one of the other guys go because they looked like the victim. You know, since they, they were the ones that were beaten, there was like blood on the ground, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it just it just made it look like he was the bad guy in the situation. So like when police came, straight to him. Wait, do you know who do you know who called the police? Was it like another neighbor that it was, it was probably another neighbor that saw, yeah. yeah. Like across the street or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> as soon as you hear something in my neighborhood, everybody's out the window just watching. <laughs> So they, they didn't even like tackle or anything that the two other guys, right? I suppose they just went and questioned the two other guys or people. Yeah, they just questioned him, but like they they questioned the two other guys and then they had uh, my neighbor in handcuffs. <laughs> I'm like, yo, like imagine that you like right, right in front of your home, you get arrested, yeah. you know, for defending your home, you know, from some people that like try to start beef and like, yeah trying to look into your building and trying to see like opportunities to like, you know, be an E. Cause like, if that was the same year, we actually ended up getting even robbed at some point, you know, that was like back in the day. And then like, yeah, man, it was a B and E to, to, to my place. Like when I was in Toronto. So people took advantage of that. And I'm just like, now, you know, neighbors trying to defend the place and then he gets tackled down. <laughs> I'm like, that sucks. Damn, injustice, injustice. That's great. Yeah. And just because he was even just like, he was wondering where his neighbors were, you know, to come out and defend him. And I'm just like, damn, like, nobody, nobody, nobody was home. Like, it was 2 a.m. in the morning. Uh, upstairs neighbors, they, you know, they, if, they're, if they're sleeping, they're upstairs. Like, they're not really hearing what's going on in the bottom, you yeah. know, unless uh, they're in the living room. But, like, yeah, no one in my place, they were home. I was like, we are, we're just like, yo, man, it sucked. Because I know if we were there, then, you know, we would have been like, hey, what's going on? And then. They would have asked us and we've been like yeah no this man lives here we don't know who these people are <laughs> you know what i mean damn yeah that's yeah a, that's a crazy story yeah but yeah man uh neighbors <laughs> we're about the neighbors no no that's that's actually that's actually a good story because when, i'm about to say this when it comes to my opinion about the question so yeah. it's with this like i have you know like the neighbors that i have everybody seems nice everybody seems cool but if i would trust them for my own survival i can the only people i really trust is my, yeah my family um and just because just because too i don't really have any relationship or i don't really know my neighbors to the point where i i can i can i can build a certain trust with them like because i don't really know them like from the surface you can be like oh yeah they look they, they're nice and everything but imagine that situation similar to what you said where if something happens and someone tried to break in my house and then we have to try to defend ourselves uh do we know if our neighbors is going to come in our defense? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And two, if we're, if, if we, if we're being like honest too, like, I don't know if you're the person you're talking, was he black? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the two other guys, I mean, you know, they were, so it was like, it just looks so bad because it fit that, that the whole description of like, yeah. Oh, you know, you know, just like, you know, all these stories that come up of injustice and stuff like that. You know, it fits the mold so bad and I, I felt so bad too because I'm just like yo this man was literally you know keeping things safe and then boom just because it looked like the you know it just looked like the other side it looked like they were the ones that were being attacked and it and they just jumped to the conclusion so it's like I don't know apparently they didn't take the other two guys in custody but I was like in a situation like that I feel like everybody should be brought to custody you know like talk it out in the in the in the uh in the department, you know, before you let some people go and then you just like, those are the people that are just looking for the next place to rob then, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so I have to, I have to bring up that reality too, like, you know, as a, as a black person. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know if that's just where, you know, police is involved. Um, 
I don't know if, you know, the others are going to be there, you know, going to be there to, you know, to, to help, or, you know what I mean? Or to be for, yeah, be in my, you know, in my corner. So because of that, yeah, no, I can't, I can't really trust, but Hey, we can still be cool and everything. Um, as yeah. but uh, yeah, 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 but trust. <laughs> I have some, oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Trust what? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, you froze for a bit, but you back, you back, you back. Oh, really? Okay. Cool. 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 I was, I was just like, you know, I feel like I have some like shoulders because of the whole thing, you know, like, <laughs> you know, those blazers with the shoulders from the nineties. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah. So oh, yeah, yeah. When it comes to trust, it's like, that's such a, it's like a privilege. Like you can, you can't just trust everybody in order to have trust. You need to have a strong rapport with, uh, yeah. with the neighbor and with the rapport. It needs to be like, uh, something that's been built from, from the get-go, you know, I mean, that's been something that's been long-term, like back when I lived in Sandy Hill, my previous neighborhood, like there were people that we grew up each with and we were able to really build relationship um, from the beginning and it, it carried on for years and years. So with those people, I could have trust them, but with the people that I currently live with, if, nah, like they're nice and everything, but I can't, for my survival, I can't trust them. So that's if right, I had yeah. to answer the question um, is not knowing your surroundings are possible threat? I would say yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Survival. yeah. Most of the time it's like, it has to do with the unknown, right? So it's like, most mm -hmm. people see the unknown as a threat. You know, like what, whatever's mysterious, it's like, ah, I don't understand it. So it's like, hey, you know, let me stay away from it. <laughs> most people do that with people all the time. It's like, hey, I don't understand you. I don't know mm -hmm. what you're doing, you know, like, yeah, I didn't know they do this in your culture. You know, like, are like judged even before people could find out what's you know what, what they're all about no <laughs> you know? that's very true that was something i wanted to bring up too uh, when it comes to the topic is uh you know is is the fear of the unknown a um good argument that we can we can say when when it comes to why some neighbor neighbors don't they really know each other is because there's a certain fear of unknown yeah i mean with that unknown definitely plays a uh, also you know what's what's being what's being imprinted in the person based on what they watch based on what they do because i mean you might just have a a neighbor whose name is karen but then you know because of all the the media feed and all the stuff you know blasting karens and stuff like that you're gonna think that maybe she's some type of way and you know low-key treat her as such when in fact she's the nicest neighbor that you could ever want you know <laughs> Wow. I feel like that's a that's a pretty good example for that one, you know. I yeah, know, very true, very true. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, there's fear unknown. I think there's ignorance too. Like some are gonna some some could have assumptions about you. Uh, yeah, or your family just because of if it's your race or if it could be it could be really any anything too. Um, but yes, there's that fear of unknown. But at the same time, it's like I don't know. For me, I feel like. If if I had my own place, right, and I had a family, like I feel like just, I know, just having like a, a good rapport with your your neighbors would be essential, um, especially too if you have kids. But like if you have kids, and then oh, especially with kids, yeah. I think that's a great way to even like, in the your kids are bringing to for them to develop is just to actually like, to get you know to, to I don't know to 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 do maybe certain activities or you know I mean or maybe if you yeah. go outside, I would just need to play with the kids, your neighbors' kids. And then yeah. could maybe build friendship too from there. This could be, you know, pivotal in the future, right? Oh yeah, I feel like those those are the kind of friendships. Like you know, that's where you find your best friends. You know, you go on, you go to the park, you go like to the forest behind the park or whatever. You're just having adventures, and it's like, yeah, it's, it's really nice. It's yeah. dope. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I remember when I was in uh, in in Nova Scotia for like maybe like six months or so back in like 2000 two or so around that time but yeah yo we we um it was a very small town true stuyak if i'm correct and um you know we were it was me my sister and like a bunch of other kids that we met from the neighborhood you know we were the new kids yeah. and um so yeah man yo they took us they took us like it was just it was like simple because it was so like you know just country country land mm -hmm. you know but it was so it was so nice because it's like you know the whole you know you tie a tire to the tree and it's like you know you're doing all these whatever you're swinging you could you can do all that stuff mm -hmm. so, like, they, they had stuff like that uh they had stories about the forest uh behind their backyard like oh 
they had coyote stories, whatever. And it's just like, oh, do you guys want to go in? And we're all just kids there. And we're just like, we know like our parents would probably say no, but like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so it, it was just nice, you know, because you feel like you're, I don't know, it's just, you know, you just feel like you're um, in your own world with them. You know, I mean, no parents or whatever, but it's just like, a, you know, a group of friends that are like walking through the forest and just having an adventure. Yeah. Yeah. Neighbors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's, yeah. that's the thing. Just, I don't know, just I feel like the experience that I had from my, when I was younger in the, in the, the prison neighborhood that I, that I lived in, and I yeah. lived in the hill. Yeah, that was like a great experience because like, I don't know, just, is it is that type of um, connection I have with the community, with the neighbors that I have that, I don't think I would ever have again, you know, I mean, and to that period of time, that was too, like, pre, like, there was a time where it was like, pre-technology, so, you know, as kids, we would go outside every day, so by going outside every day, like, you had the chance to really get to know your neighbors, while now with technology, it's making it hard, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's really, I don't know, like, um, you know, some people, they still got it, for sure, like, I'm sure a good, a good amount of people, you know, they, uh, they had those kind of connections, mm -hmm. and, and um it's nice to see that but i mean it's just like the whole technology you can you can you can use technology for the whole day and without even realizing it, you spent the whole day you know just on your phone or just like looking at your tv you know what i mean or just listening to music even and these are all like anti-social things you know what i mean so it's like if, if somebody gets comfortable with that kind of lifestyle then like going out and interacting with your neighbor you know even just doing something that you would genuinely like to do you might you might just feel more comfortable just staying at home and like binge watching your favorite show instead of actually having a, a good time or an adventure or just yeah. trying something new you know yeah very true i think that it's uh, it's almost like you know you get comfort you get <clears throat> comfortable with well, you know we get comfortable with technology you know i mean it's like now that we have access to so much like we're you know when we're we're in it you know i mean it's yeah. what we do and then by being so comfortable and uh, to that you know type of you know of, uh, of yeah. technology it's like why why should i why should i communicate with my neighbors when i'm able to just either you know i mean talk to my friends you know through instagram i can talk to people through messenger i can text i can watch videos for you know for hours and stuff like that yeah. and, and for days what you mean for hours? <laughs> <laughs> my bad, my bad. I forgot that you know the podcast. You know, it's for days. Yeah, this man forgot what. <laughs> you, know, you know, sometimes you know when when you get when you get carried over over you know for a conversation for days, you forgot that it's for days. Ooh, okay. yeah, man, days just go by without even realizing it. You know? <laughs> saying, I'm saying, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that's the thing. Like now, it's like it's. It's, it's almost like uh, your neighbors is now just more of an option. Like, yeah, there's the option that you can talk to them, but it's not, it's not a, a priority. I feel like before, back in the days, it was more yeah. of a priority to like, you know, for, you know and because you didn't really have much else to interact with. Like it was your family. And then if it's not your family, when you go outside, you would talk to your surroundings. So it was your neighbors most time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, you know, what you have to do you know? yeah exactly but um you know uh, let me see if you had any uh any other question mm -hmm. yeah what you got what you got what you got let's see let's see let's see mm. well, maybe, I, have, have ever, oh, maybe uh, I got a question for you but do you got something uh let's see let's see let's see i had one but it wasn't really a a question but it was more like um you know like okay when it comes to like getting to know your neighbors uh do you think sometime we might you might need like a when i when i say crisis I, it, i'm not saying like crisis like it has to be something that's big but it could be like anything where you need to have a certain help from you know what i mean from from a neighbor do you think yeah. that can make people closer or neighbors closer yeah i mean they're that's that's probably Better of like you know good uh trust and relationships because then like you were different now you guys are after the same type of thing whether it's like, oh no where but i mean after something like that yeah 
yeah, you know, I got you. I helped you. You feel positively when you look at the other person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, man, how do you feel about it? All right, all right. So as I was talking about crises before, you know, the signal out here in space, they you know, got a little too low. So <laughs> in crisis, like, uh, you know, they, they, they allow for great connections. You know what I mean? Because it's like, yeah, you tackle a common enemy, for example, or you tackle a common, a common cause that, you know, you, you and uh, your neighbor, they both want. So, for example, the example I was using is um, the stories of the people going after that for like not or, you know, um, landlords wanting to people uh, in the time of like crap. Like I'm seeing a lot of these like uh, news feeds of like, you know, people banding together. And it's like, it's those kind of things where it's like, yeah, man, if you, you know, you, you guys stuck together. Now, when you're in the building and you pass each other, you can't help but be like, hey, you know, like, yeah, look what we did. You know? <laughs> there's, like, there's an instant, like, stuff. Just, like, yeah, that's my, that's my, um, that's my teammate, you know, that's my partner in crime, <laughs> all of that. Yeah, yeah. well said, well said. Yeah, I, I believe that uh, crisis or any type of situation can definitely bring neighbors together. Uh, yeah. Just because, Sometimes it might, a situation might be the thing that removes that fear of uh, of unknown or people that have that certain maybe ignorance or you know that assumptions about one of their neighbors and then the situation happens and then you kind of get to know that person or the people and then yeah. the neighbors are like oh after all they're actually uh, you know more uh, you know. I, it wasn't what I was expecting you know exactly yeah 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 because some people have the, you know they build like their own idea of how somebody is. And like, sometimes it's sure it can be based off the first impression, but it's like, people need to know. It's like, you know, don't jump to conclusions. <laughs> you know, it's like, just know that, hey, I met this person for like three minutes. They seem nice, a little bit awkward, but you know, you know, I'm not gonna build a conclusion that they're an awkward person based off a three minute interaction. You know what I mean? It's just like something you noticed, but it's, it's not necessarily them. So it's like, yeah, you know, just keep keep on talking and uh, find out uh, find find out exactly you know who you're living with, who your neighbor is. Yeah. And too, like you might you might catch someone on a bad day, or they were like they're not that's true. To talk. That's facts. So yeah. I feel like it's more like if it's a consistent behavior, like if this person is all the time you see that person, or you kind of have a small interaction, they're always awkward. Then yeah, you can maybe have a, you can end up with the conclusion that okay, this person is awkward. <laughs> yeah 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 if this person is mean you can you know after a certain times you're like okay this behavior is consistent so therefore i can conclude that but yeah off of just one nah because yo for me like i'm someone that you know i'm positive uh, usually if you see me uh you know I, i'm cool and everything but i'm not perfect too so there might be a day where like i might i don't know i, I was kind of i don't know i was listening to music or something and then i'm going back home maybe i came back from work or from somewhere and i'm kind of tired so I don't really yeah. want to talk much. So maybe someone is like, hey, and I'm just like, oh, hey, but not yeah. much energy. <laughs> and they're going to be like, oh, this man is so rude. I came out here like top tier energy and he's just like brushed me off. <laughs> but I'd be like, yo, I just, in my mind, in my mind I'd just be like, yeah, I didn't have the energy to talk, but yo, don't worry, man. Next day, I, I'll i be there. I'll be there. I'll be at the same spot. We can, yeah. we, can we can chop it up a bit, but that's yeah. right. That's what it is. That's what it is. But yeah, you're about to ask me a question. What was your question? You ah, okay. Let's see. Uh, let's see if I remember. My question was, um, have you ever had a bad neighbor? And if so, how did you deal with it? <laughs> good, good question. Uh, let's see. Let's see. A bad neighbor. Ooh. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of, okay. So because for where I live right now, like mm -hmm. my neighbors are, you know, it's, they're fine. There's no problem there. Back when I lived in Sandy Hill, like because of the co-op, uh, you know vibe like pretty much everybody was was like there was no problem um but i'm trying to think of a bad neighbor honestly I've, i think i've been lucky enough where i've always had like good i mean i only really lived in well you know before when i was like you know one or two or three i live in apartments here and there but i don't really remember that but from my memory itself from the two you know environment that i've lived in so far uh yeah 
I mean, it's been, it's been, uh, it's been cool. Like I didn't have like a bad neighbor. And I think too that oftentimes people that say that they have a bad neighbor, often I hear it's like people that live in like those apartments, you know what I mean? Where it's like, you have maybe like an upstairs neighbor, someone that maybe makes too much noise or something where it's like, bruh. But luckily for me, it was never that. Um, and where I live in my neighborhood now, it's so quiet, bruh. Like there, there's not, there's, there's never a time where it's like, yo, there's like noise complaining or anything like that, right? And even yeah. when I live in Sandy Hill, um, it was pretty chill. You know, my neighbors were, were not like, you know, bothering us or doing anything. I was like, yo, come on, can you calm down? Actually, the people that were, that were, were probably like the worst, well, well bad neighbors that were kind of annoying at times at, at, during nights was where I live. I live not far from Ottawa U, like literally seconds from Ottawa U. Uh, okay. Like, yeah. you know, those um, student housing. That's and, right. It's and like on, on Friday, Saturday, they're going to have a party, right? So you'll hear like, you know, noise and stuff because, you know, from the music and everything. Um, so that would be, if you want to consider a bad neighbor, they were maybe on the weekend, they were bad neighbors, I would say. All that noise, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't disturb a rev like this. <laughs> hey, man, but yo, I was I was too young back then. I couldn't really like go and, you know, and clap back. I was just, I was, I was too young, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah, man. No, that's good, that's good. Yeah, what about you? Do you have any uh, bad experience with bad neighbor? Yeah. Uh, neighbor. Uh, so pretty much the place I was living at, you're not supposed to have animals, but she brought her animal and like, she was like, oh, you know, uh, I'm just babysitting it. And I was like, yo, that's cool. It's a cute dog, you know, and everything like that. But I'm just like, yo, she just, she let the dog like go everywhere, just in the front lawn. And she had the kind of like mentality where it's like, I'll pick it up later. There's no problem. <laughs> Uh, like, like you don't live here with other people <laughs> you know what i mean like in the front line you know once it, once it starts to start, especially in the winter time like she wouldn't she would just let the dog go and then she would expect the snow to bury it so the kids that used to live in the in the in, in the same location yeah they pretty much you know they stopped making snowmen they stopped playing in the snow Damn. simply because you know she wasn't doing what she's supposed to do and pick it up <laughs> you know what i mean so that's that's the only time where i mean that's the only kind of neighbor i can think of where it was like oh you know like this lady she's not getting the message i could tell it to her as clear as day and it's just like she never listens no no and she was very argumentative as well so i mean it just uh, wasn't really uh yeah otherwise you know yeah interesting times <laughs> hey, like yeah. i said man, like i would say my conclusion about the topic i would say that ideally i think it's for the greater good, I think is is good to to live in a certain environment where you're able. You don't have necessarily have to be best. I'm not saying you have to be best friends with your neighbors, but I think at least like yeah, obviously respect is is minimum, and like you know just be nice to each other. That's one. But I think that's that's pretty easy most time. Like except if you have maybe a, a case like you where like the the lady or someone a neighbor where it's just like they really don't care about anybody else, just themselves, right? Yeah, it's like you can't really do much with those people. But other where it's like, you know, they're considerate, then at least you can have that, you know, good, you know, just a, a good respect, you know what I mean? But yeah. I feel like if you're able to actually have a rapport where you can kind of eventually build a, you know, a, just a good relationship between neighbors, then I think that mm-hmm. could be beneficial, especially if you have kids, I think that could be beneficial in the long run. And two, just because, as I said, in terms of survival, I would like to know my neighbor to the point where I can I can trust them if anything bad happens. You know, that's right. Yeah, you yeah. gotta survive. You survive too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a quote too. Uh, what is it? Uh, like uh, I know before the podcast, I, I I was trying to find my words about it, it was something about that, like um, uh, like you need a family or something. Oh, uh, wait. I think it's what it takes a village. Yeah, it, it takes a village to yeah. yeah use I like that quote. Exactly. Yeah. So when I think of that, I'm kind of thinking of like, that would be like the ideal community that I would like to have where like, you know, you're able to trust your neighbors where, you know, you can even have people that can babysit your kids. Like when I, when I live yeah. in Canada, like you can, you know, I could be babysit by one of my neighbors. I, we could exactly. be one of our neighbors and I don't know, it was just, uh, that was, that was it's like, like being an aunt or an uncle or something like that. It doesn't feel like you're with your neighbor. It feels like you're with like either family or extended family, you know? <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. So that's a good thing. But Reality too is like nowadays with we talked about beginning technology and just aspect two fear of unknown ignorance. If you all add up to that, 
that could, you know, that could lead to that strange loss of, you know, maybe rapport or communication. Uh, yeah. But I'm not going to say that community is gone because, you know, there's still people around. So I, I, I still think there's a community. Uh, but I think one solution could be maybe in some places, like have like, I don't know, like activities or things where it could kind of like bring people together. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, those are definitely important. You know, it's, it's good to have those. Cause, yeah, man. Just have a good time with somebody. It makes it makes like the biggest difference. Cause then next time you see them, yeah, you know, your your day is gonna be a lot better. Cause it's like, hey, you, you know, you, I remember you from that like, cookout. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how you do it? <laughs> you know, yeah, for sure. It's like for me, it's like I don't. Know, it's weird that like I know I know some people in my neighborhood that don't even live like they live like five minutes away, maybe or ten minutes. But and I know their names and everything. But I don't even know the names of, of my neighbors. And if you uh -huh. think about it, I might know like names of friggin' IG girls <laughs> on IG. <laughs> I don't even know my neighbor's name. It's like, what? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> How many miles away? But you don't even know your own neighbor's names? <laughs> That's like... I never met those IG girls. It's like, God damn, bro. <laughs> yep, yeah, it's crazy. It's wild. <laughs> yeah, times. But uh, let's go, guys, with uh, our, you know, usual segment. Music for what, Khalilo? Please get the ears ready, y'all. We got some tracks for you guys. <laughs> some good vibes for the people. Good vibes. So, uh, vibes. You want to start, Kilo, with your song for the week? Yes. Okay. All right. So you see, um, I got excited with this whole background thing, right? So I'm in okay. space, okay. and a song that reminds me of space is uh, "Gifted" by NASA and uh, Kanye West. Ooh. And some other people in there too. I think like Like Lee and. Who's the other one? Ah, there's a third one, but I, you know, I, I can't remember. So <laughs> I'm actually gonna listen to that one. I, I've never heard that song from. With the it's concert. such a good song. It's such a good song. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, check it out. Check it out. It's nice vibes. It's uh, pretty galactic. So yeah, I like that. Uh, for yeah. me this week, I'm gonna go with. Uh, what you got for us? By the name of uh, Anais Cardo, and I think that another guy named Tomo. So they made a song to make a name. Uh, Pardon my French is the song. I like that. Yeah. yeah. And I believe that she's, um, I think she's from France, but she's currently in Ottawa where I think she was studying. But uh, either way, hey, so, you know, a song from someone in Ottawa. So shout out to her. And yeah, it's a good song, good vibe, catchy R&B song. I really like And she makes like French and English on it. So I yeah. appreciate that. So it's original. I like the blends of languages in like one song. It yeah. makes me invest in the song more. I don't know, maybe if that's just me or something, but like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll look into like both sides of the language and I'll, I'll just try to get the bigger picture of what's going on. Yeah. You know? It's so and, dope. Yeah. And even there's a, there's a guy I know that we used to work together um, back then at Millennium. Uh, yeah. Years ago. And cool guy. And he's and he's doing music now. And like his name is, artist name, well, his name is Marino. Shout out to him. But awesome. it goes under the name Reno Gang. And um, recently he dropped like a, a EP or something. And uh, it's like in his you know, native language. I think he's from, uh, I wanted to say Madagascar, but one of those oh. like small island or countries in, in Africa. But, like I yeah. was listening to his music. And you know, like when you hear something and you don't even understand the language, you don't understand nothing, but it sounds so good. It so sounds good. Like that music was like, wow. So many music on my playlist, I like that. Like I remember back in high school, man, everybody would be like, yo, you listen to the weirdest things, but I'm just like, yo, like get, get out of the get get out of Canada for a minute. Like, don't just go to the US. There's some good music like all over the world, you know? And like yeah. it would just be the most randomest things that you could find on my on my like iPod back in the day, you know? <laughs> so even like there's an artist too, like I've you know, some like yeah, most of my, my, my music you could say it's in English or in French. Yeah. I have a couple where it's like I have a couple in, in Portuguese, like R&B Portuguese. Yo, yo, yo. And it's dope, huh? <laughs> yo, right. It's really dope. And then I have like an artist or two that they're from South Africa, like R&B from there. Like yes. Oh, I heard some South African music. Actually, it's actually nice. So yeah, yo, you can find good music around the world, man. You know, That's true. Like, you to, 100%. You know, discover a bit, go outside your comfort zone, but you, know, you yeah. can find some vibes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not. Go. It's not all about the words. Sometimes, sometimes you just gotta feel the music, you know. <laughs> yeah, and too, sometimes, like you know, even like you would say the words in their language and they don't even know what it means, but it just it sounds good. The flow is there. It's like okay. Yeah. And that's then, like with the with the Rima, okay. Rima music. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. No, I, I know it's music to the T, but I don't know what the heck he's saying. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like Afrobeat. It's like you know, most of the the bigger artists in, uh, in the Afrobeat world is like you know from Nigeria. So you know, yeah. Nigeria they have so many languages, but 
Uh, and the slang too. I'm just like, whew, I'm yeah, even more lost. <laughs> if you're listening to it, if you're not from Nigeria, you're like you're listening to it, you're like, you don't even know what they're saying, but it's so uh, catchy, it's such so a catchy. vibe that you're still gonna listen to it and say, try to say some of the words. It's just yeah, no, it's beautiful, you know. What I mean, so that's a great it, thing about it. Really it. Is. And, uh, yeah. You know, I'll bring uh, those so I have to remember one of those episodes, I'll bring that girl. Yeah, she's she's dope from South Africa. She's okay, dope. yeah, sounds good, sounds good. Yeah, man. But um well that man, you know, it's been a great episode. We appreciate everybody who's been listening from the zero zero second to the end. We appreciate all one, you know, the number one, you know, all the day ones fan, even the new one. If you just started watching, man, go back and go back to all of our other episodes, man. We got, you know, we got a, you know, we got a gallery of episodes, man. We, Get we're back trying to build, you know, we're trying to build a, a book, like, you know, philosophy with the tomes and chapters. That's the right. World, you know what I mean? Uh, it's going to be an academy list. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yo, I said, <laughs> In a couple of years, someone maybe might end up uh, casual. Maybe like, God damn, they got figuring like 500 episodes. Oh my That's God. Right. To catch yeah. up. Can't wait for those days. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, yeah. we're working on it. We're, we're trying to, you know, build up a, a you know, a, a pile of books. Mm -hmm. So then we're going to come back to these episodes and, and, and have a good laugh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Like, man, yeah, we're using these backgrounds and whatnot. Like, <laughs> well, I think like in two, three years, they're like, Oh yeah. my God, Zoom, it was so bad. Like, we had like so another technology or application. Exactly. <laughs> man, yeah, man. It goes too fast, man. There's too, there's too much change. It, does. it really does. It really does. But right. yeah, bro, another great episode. You know, this is Tom, Tom, uh, Tom 5, oh, episode six. Episode six. six. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. So, neighbors, Tom 5, episode 6. Stay tuned for episode 7. Y'all ain't ready for episode seven, but just wait. <laughs> you know, I've been saying sure. every every week, man. We, we we come up with something new, bro. Mm -hmm. People can't don't expect it, man. That's 100 percent. Trying yeah, to be yeah. original, not like everybody else. So we're trying to do, <laughs> do our own thing. And uh, right. you know, don't forget, man. This is the number one podcast in Ottawa. I said it. I said it. I said you heard it first. We'll go. We'll be there one day. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Ayo, Kadilo, man. Another good bye, one. Bye. Always, it's always a pleasure. And for the people, man, bye. Bye. Peace and chicken grease. <laughs> Let's go.